Hey everyone, uh, thought I would pop in here with team placements coming up. I thought that we would go over the age grid a little bit um, for next season. So everyone in their head always thinks that, you know, you automatically, quote, move up to a level. And one thing that we really need to focus on on our upcoming teams is building top age teams. Top age teams have the advantage in a competition. And I just wanted to come over here and give you a couple. First, this is the 24-25 uh, season age grids for divisions. And they're based on tiny, mini, youth, junior, senior, yada, yada. Okay. So what you do as a coach is you guys give us your birth years and we come over here and we say, okay, you know, um, this child was born in 2017. So 2017 qualifies for us to be tiny. But what happens is 2017 is also eligible for mini. However, that is the bottom of the age grid. So by having a team compete in this division with all kids who are 2017, is going to be at a disadvantage simply by their size and age. We're not even talking skills here, we're just talking about size and age. And then you'll notice over here, 2016, well, that's middle age range for the level minis. Um, however, you're also at 2016, you're also junior age eligible. So that means that we would put your athlete, year 2016, on a junior level team. Now, if we put, have a team of, you know, 20, and we have 16 kids who are born in 2016, and the rest of them are born in 2009, well, clearly we are going to have a disadvantage as we enter the floor. So, Really what you wanna focus on is what are these top years? What are these top years? A team that has the most athletes on it in the top years are going to automatically have an advantage because one thing that's important to know is when you come over here to the rubrics guide, like level appropriate documents, these are things that we have to do within the level. This is level one. Level one is level one, regardless if you are tiny, mini, junior, youth, or senior, the same skills apply. So a six-year-old or a seven-year-old is not going to be able to do these exact same skills at the same level that a 16-year-old is going to do. So there's no, with the, with the, level appropriate documents, it doesn't go by age. It doesn't say if you're level one tinies, you do this. If you're level one minis, you do this. It's level one across every age that there is. So I think that's just an important thing to know about um, is level one is level one, level two, level two, level three, level three, and top age teams have the advantage. So if your kid is Born in 2013, they are still youth age level. They are still youth age level. Moving up does not mean that you automatically get to a disadvantage the team age ahead of you. Because level three is still level three. So I thought I'd give you a visual on this because I think it's easier for people to understand in other sports. So let's say that we each have baseball teams. You have one and I have one. My team is this team. This is a JV team. I can have up to age 16 year old athletes on this team. And this is my team. And we're gonna play your team. Your team is this one. Hmm, who is going to win? Because the sport is the same. The rules are the same. The goals are the same, right? It's baseball. But my team has this 
and your team has this. Comparatively as well, let's say that we're going to uh, go for the youth division. You get the youth team because I know how to stack teams by age. So here's my team once again. And you guys get to have youth. So we're going to play each other. No matter how hard you try, my team is likely to beat your team. If I were a betting woman, I'm betting on these guys, not these. So this is a good vigil across the age. So let's say this is a mini level team. This is a youth level team. They're just going to be better by size and, and what they've learned. So as the new season comes up, wish for your athlete to have a role, not an age bracket. And remember, levels are levels, regardless of how old your kid is.